Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now try to understand the block diagram of a communication system. So if somebody asks you, how does a communication system work? Or can you explain me with the help of a diagram how any in, in general any communication would work? So in that case, you can just explain it with the help of this diagram, which looks very simple. So this is how the block diagram of a basic communication looks like. So here you have the information source. So this is your information source from where the entire information is going to come. So from the information source, the information comes in the form of message signal. Right? So we call this input signal as the message signal. So this message signal comes to the transmitter. Transmitter will convert it into a form which is capable of being transmitted and then it will send it. So this is the transmitted signal. Now this signal is passed through a channel and then this signal will be received by the receiver. So that is the received signal. And then the signal which is received by the receiver, what will the receiver do? The receiver will take, I mean, convert the signal again into a form which is understandable by the user. And then again, the message signal will get converted into the user. So you see here, the, what was the signal that came out from the source? It was a message signal. And what is the signal that is delivered to the user? That is again a message signal. So the same information gets carried from one place to another right so here you also see a new term that is noise so noise also comes into this channel now we will see what is noise because these three transmitter channel and receiver they are the basic components which form the communication system but other than that also there are a couple of uh, components which also play a major or a very important role in the communication system Okay, another small thing which I would like you to note here is, here I have been using the word transmitter, right? Sometimes somewhere in, in your textbooks or <coughs> over the internet, you might come across a term called transducers. And you might wonder that transducers, the purpose of a transducer looks very similar to the purpose of a transmitter. Then why do we have two different terms? Okay, let me talk about transducer and transmitter for two minutes so that you are clear with the difference. Now basically, why do we have a transmitter here? That is the first question. So that it can convert the type of signal into a type of signal which is capable of transmission. For example, if it is a non-electrical signal which is coming from the source, the transducer will convert it into electrical signal. Now you will tell me that is exactly what a transmitter does because just now you told that the job of transmitter is to convert the signal into a form that is capable of transmission and which form of signal is capable of transmission? Electrical signals. So perfectly, that is what a transmitter does. So why do we have a transducer again? So what's the difference? Okay, that's a good point or a good question to be noted here. Now transducers convert the mechanical energy or any other form of energy into electrical signals. But the electrical signals which are produced by transducers are mainly in millivolts. Right? Because whenever I talk of electrical energy, what am I talking about basically? I am either talking about voltage or I am talking about current. Because that is how we denote electrical energy. Because we all have studied, I mean, I'm sure I don't need to explain you current, voltage and all those stuff again because we have already gone through our lesson on electronics, right? The semiconductors, we have already studied all those stuff. So we are all aware of voltage, current and things like that. So when I talk about electrical signal, so I am talking about something like voltage or current. So these transducers, what were they doing? They were actually converting the job of transducer was to convert mechanical energy or any other form of energy into electrical signal but this electrical signals was mainly in millivolts so which is a very small voltage now earlier there was no transmitter there were only transducers and the purpose of transducer was to convert non-electrical signals into electrical signals and these electrical signals had 
I mean, they were they had lesser strength. They they were in millivolts. Now it was then observed that in order to transmit these electrical signals over long distances, the signal strength should be higher. If the signals are just in millivolts, when it travels through the entire channel, sometimes it might be lost, right? I mean, it is something like this. If a person is strong, we say that, like, suppose if there is a race where you have to run at a stretch for five hours or you have to run at a stretch for 10 kilometers, so if the person is strong enough, we say that, okay, he's a strong man, so he can do it. Now, if the person is very weak and he's not well, he he's like not at all energetic, what do we say? Oh, no, he'll not be able to travel. I mean, he'll not be able to run for 10 kilometers, right? So that means if we want the signal to travel for a large distance, we want the signal to be strong enough. But in, with the case of transducers, the kind of electrical signals which they were producing, they did not have that much of strength. So later with the evolution of and improvement in technology, transducers output needed to travel over long distances. So there came the limitation of transducers. So transmitters were developed to compensate the signal loss due to resistance and other interference. Now, the question is, what happens in that channel because of which the signal's strength might keep on decreasing? We will talk about that is where noise plays a role. We'll talk about that later. Just leave that for the later section. But for now, you just understand that if a person has to run for 10 kilometers, the person should have that much of strength so that he doesn't fade away somewhere in between. So that is why transmitters came. So what did the transmitters do? They converted the millivolt signal output of transducers into current for transmission. So here the transducers were producing voltages in millivolts. Now transmitters converted this millivolts into current. Why did they convert it into current? That's because if you make current to travel over a distance, they are less sensitive to interference that means they are less sensitive to resistances or noise or or all other kinds of interference so current is a better option if you want it to travel for longer distances because current was lesser sensitive so these days what do people do these days we do not have a separate transducer and a transmitter so now you understand the point this signal comes first it goes to a transducer which actually converts it into an electrical signal of lesser strength and then transmitter converts those millivolts into current for better transmission over long distances. So these days we do not have separate transducers and transmitters. So these days transducers are embedded with transmitters. So they both come together. So generally people call that as a transmitter. So whenever I say a transmitter, the transmitter definitely has a transducer in, embedded in it. Right? So you understand, you are clear with the concept of a transmitter and transducer. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.